Um, what I like about it is that it feels like a game. They don't necessarily know the guy they're going against. So is it it's basically player X, you know, what's his, what's the technique that we need to use? What are the, the keys that we talk about on every play that you have to execute when you don't necessarily know what the coverage is going to be? Um, because a lot of times in practice at this point, we're going against our group. You kind of know what's going on. You know the technique of the guy against you. And out there, it feels like a game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know how DBs are. Yeah. Last week, you talked a little bit, or last time we had you, we talked a little bit about Jalen, you know, being more than just a speed guy that I think he kind of catches that perception unfairly. What do you think it is about his game that really stands out outside the speed? I say the change of direction, just being explosive as well. Um, and he's tough. I mean, you saw it in the national championship game. I think you saw it again, um, you know, a couple nights ago, where it just getting banged, going out, coming back in. So you, you can't teach the toughness, but uh, I mean, the, the, the route running is he can, he can stop on a dime, so. What, what, do you, what can you say about like his release game on the line of scrimmage? Because like, you know, I, I watch him and Devon Pants and these other guys coming out that it seems like you can't get hands on those guys. Yeah, uh, especially uh, at times when you're aligned off the ball, it's hard for guys to, to get hands on you compared to some of the guys that line up on the ball. But uh, with that um, and being in motion and things of that nature, allow for some creative releases and attacking leverages and really trying to move guys off the spot to create pressure for them. And a lot of that stuff, he just has a, a knack for it and um, sets the guy up on one play and then goes back with kind of something different in the next quarter. You got hip speed, obviously the team. We talked about Robert Foster earlier, really, there's so much damn speed. How does that kind of influence guys that whose game maybe is more, I don't want to use the term possession, but bigger body guys that kind of offer in the middle of the field? Like, is that kind of the thinking of the room to balance it so it creates some type of space? It's good to have guys that have different skill sets. I mean, a lot like a, a NBA team where this guy is a shooter, this guy is a defender, and not that they have to be pigeonholed into like one thing, but um, it does make it it does make it nice. And it ultimately, as coaches. We're just trying to make sure that what that guy does well, we put him in those spots to do that and not ask him to do something that he can't do or it's not a, an asset of his versus the next guys. Because that would be dumb on our end to try to do that and, and say the guy can't do it. You know, when you think about like, I asked Coach whether they have like a 53 man roster and he, he slapped me down to drive too far away. But when you consider like, if you keep it six or even seven receivers, when you think about spots five, six, seven, how do you kind of balance what that guy does as a receiver compared to what he can do on special teams when it comes to making those decisions? Is that, is that a question for Coach Crossman or Coach Blake? It's really for, for, for a Coach and, and Coach Crossman on the special team side of it, but generally when you have a guys that are they're playing those kind of positions, where it helps on the receiver side of it is the ability to play multiple positions um, because in a pinch they might need to fill in or something along those lines. So uh, that's really where they create value for themselves is the ability to do different things and line up in different spots and ultimately playing special teams, you see that kind of skill set translate as well where they can move around in different kind of units.